21 days that we've been fasting i've been i've been praying and believing god for some things uh, collectively for us as a ministry individually for me personally and and also for my family just been praying and believing god for things for breakthrough for destiny doors and for strategies amen for strategies which is a, a game plan a master plan for how we're going to access the doors that he has for us and i believe that when the scripture said to joshua to consecrate yourselves because on the morrow i will do wonders among you when he gave them the commitment to fast and to pray and to consecrate themselves he was reminding them that when you put me first that i will show you signs and wonders and i will move on your behalf when God told them to, to, to consecrate themselves, it was right when they were about to possess the promised land. What was spoken for generations was now, they were, they were now on the verge of stepping into promises. They were on the verge of stepping into next levels. They were on the verge to stepping into the land that was flowing with milk and honey, a land of provision and blessing and breakthrough. And, but they were also stepping into a land where there will be opposition, that there will be giants in the land, that there will be adversaries at your door. Uh, but God will send protection so that you and your family can prosper in your promise. And so every attack from the enemy that's been trying to come against you, I believe that when we're fasting and praying, that we already are setting ahead of us the win for the battle that's ahead. Amen. And so when we consecrated ourselves, I believe that God is going to do and has already begun to do great things in our midst. If you believe it, say amen hallelujah let me, let me just see the hands of those of you that, that the lord has blessed during this consecration amen okay yes he has done some things in and i i know that that you know in this 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 neo-pentecostal post-modern 21st century church uh, that we don't necessarily have testimony and praise services like we used to amen but but the old folks used to draw strength from one another when we begin to testify of the goodness of the lord hallelujah you mind if we just draw from the wells of our ancestors who understood how to encourage our brothers and sisters when we would testify about the goodness of the lord and how he has blessed us and how he has made ways for us and though it hasn't been easy and though it's been testing trials the old saints used to testify about how things and opposition may have come but but through it all, the Lord gave them the victory. I want to just take this quick moment. Hallelujah for a testimony service. Amen. I'm going to ask if, um, if, if uh, Sister Paola Talley would come at this moment. I'm going to share something with you. Amen. To make sure that you leave here with the word. Amen. But the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony i'm going to ask if, if sister taola would come and just share a testimony um as, in regards to this consecration that you have been faithfully partaking in over the last few years since joining this ministry put your hands together for mrs tally god bless you all thank you pastor for allowing me to share and lady thank you um Okay, so when Pastor declared this year to be the year of the open door, I don't know about you guys, but I held on to that word and I just ran with it. And last year I testified of how during the fast, I had applied for my master's program and the very next day I got an acceptance to that program. <laughs> Amen, glory to God. And this year on the first day of the fast, I received an unexpected job opportunity that was offering me more than double my current salary and just much more flexibility, much more benefits. And this was on day one of the fast. I was not looking for this job. I didn't ask for this job. I didn't even apply for this job. This was a word of mouth referral for this job. 
And I just want to really encourage you guys and let you guys know that not only will your name be in rooms that you haven't just even stepped in, but your name will be on doors that you haven't even knocked on yet. Because there is a people that need what you have. There are people that need the gifts and the talents that you have. There are people who need the anointing that is over your life. Because you're, you're, you are in high demand. I believe that us as people of God and children of God, we are in high demand. And so when I accepted this offer, it was, of course, on day one of the fast. So I was like, okay, I need to give my notice to my job. Um, and again, this is during the, the fast. So I was like, okay, let me just give my resignation now. And usually when you're planning to leave a job, you have to give two weeks notice. That's a standard time of like, you know, for them to prepare and whatnot. But when I looked at my policy, it said three weeks. And I was a little disappointed because I was like, wait, three weeks? Like I barely wanted to give them two weeks and I have to give them an additional week. So my flesh was fleshing and I was like, I don't want to do this. But I looked at my calendar and I saw that three weeks is 21 days. 21 days for my job to transit, for them to transition, for them to prepare. But really in that moment, God showed me, I'm going to use this time of you being in my presence, of you being in this fast so that you can prepare for you to transition, for me to give you what it is that you need for this next season. So I believe, so that day, that, that, was, the first, that was day one, I was so encouraged. And I was like, okay, Lord, this, is, this fast I'm not going to look at it anymore as just an act to do, but I'm looking at this as an activation. I'm, a, I'm receiving this fast to be an activation of my gifts, an activation of my anointing, an activation of the power that truly works in us. And these past couple of weeks, Pastor has been teaching a lot about doors and uh, and we've been learning about it. We've been, you know, receiving everything that he said. And one of my favorite kind of doors are the automatic doors, the ones that automatically open. And not just because I'm lazy and I don't like pushing and pulling, but it's just so convenient. You know, I love automatic doors. And I learned that even though automatic doors all pretty much function the same way and that they open automatically and close, they all have different functions. There are some doors that have what's called motion sensors, which can detect motion that's going on in front of the door. If you throw a ball, if you roll a ball, it'll automatically open because it sense that there's motion. There's also what's called pressure sensors, which is like a mat and it steps and once you step on it, it can detect the weight that's been added onto that mat. And some of us are, com are familiar, we have become so um, accustomed to those kinds of doors where we know that it's our expectation is for it to open and we some of us may be feeling like we've been before an automatic door and it's not opening we're, we're standing there we're like why is this door not opening why is this door still closed when i know it's supposed to be open i can see the sensor i'm making motion like hello i'm here and you guys might be thinking well this door's supposed to open but can i tell you that there's another motion there's another sensor on automatic doors and it's called the action the what is it the access control sensor this sensor is a different kind than the rest of the other sensors this one is that has a different um, requirement a different um, sensor that requires either a key card a key fob or other forms of scanning devices and when I was looking into what kind of devices are needed it says that these devices are approved by the access control system in order to verify that the person has the adequate um, credentials to give grant them access or deny them access and I was reminded of a time that Matthew and I we were at a hotel and we checked in we were on our way to the, the elevator and we were with another couple that was in the elevator and they waited for us and to our surprise they were also going to the same level as us so they waited for us we got in the door closes and we press on the button and the elevator was not going anywhere. It was not moving, it wasn't going up, it wasn't going down. All that happened was that the door opened again. And we're like, is this elevator broken? Like what's going on? Like we need to go, we need to rest, we need to go to our room. And all of us, all four of us, we stepped out, we go to the lady, we're like, this elevator is broken, like you guys need to fix this because we're not taking the stairs, like we'll wait, like we don't mind. But she, took, she tells us and she looks at us and she's like, do you have your key? And we say, yeah, we have our, the room key. Is that what you're talking about? She's like, yeah, you have to scan it so that it can give you access to all of the levels. 
And I believe that this fast was the key. This fast was the key that is giving us all access to those doors that you've been knocking on, on those doors that you've been praying for. So I encourage you. I just encourage you and to just believe that whatever it is that you've been praying for, that your key is your faith, your key is your relationship with God, your key is your worship, your key is being in His presence. So I'm just certain that this fast was the activation that will grant us all access. And I don't know what this, these three weeks might have looked like for you. I don't know if maybe, you know, it wasn't what you were praying for. You didn't see what you were praying for. But I just encourage you to use your key. You have access. So I want you to tell your neighbor, whoever's sitting next to you, tomorrow I'm walking into my access granted season. God bless you. Come on, someone say I'm walking into it. Come on, my access granted season. My access granted season. Come on, your prayer is your key. Your worship is your key. Your relationship is your key. Your commitment is your key. Hallelujah. Now, if you're not aware of that particular hotel experience, everyone does not have access to these floors. Those who pay a general fare has access to get in the elevator, perhaps the first, second, third, or fourth, or fifth floor. But for high level floors, higher level floors and for some of them was a it's probably a higher payment a higher fee so there's a different level of sacrifice and so with our salvation we have access to the building but the commitment you're willing to make will determine the levels that you're able to go hallelujah but i'm grateful to god that he's giving you access to all levels did you hear what she declared access to all levels hallelujah Here, here's what I like is I've been on that same kind of elevator with my wife and there's someone who's been on the elevator with us who's supposed to be on that floor but didn't have their key So we asked them, what floor are you going to? And they said, we're going to the 18th floor. Okay, we're going to, to 19. I don't have my key. You, you need your key to get up there. They, I, I don't have my key. So now we have to discern whether, are you really supposed to even be in this building? Because you're technically not allowed to do it. All right, but you know, I think the, I, my, my, my wife was upstairs with the kids and I had to come downstairs, you know, and da, da 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 whatever. And so we felt good about it, but we used our key to help them gain access to a floor that they were not properly prepared for. I just want to help and, and just move in along the lines of her testimony that God has given you the key with this consecration. But it's not just for you, God help me. But with you to be discerning properly, there are other people that God is commanding you to take up to the next level. Uh, did you hear what I said? The Lord is commanding you to help someone else get up to the next level. Hallelujah. It's your season for access. It's your season for access. Let me. Now. I want, I want to just qu quickly share what the Lord has given me, but, but, but I, and I know we're excited about the access, but there's a part of her testimony that I don't want you to overlook. She said the moment she started praying, the first day that she prayed, she got access to an opportunity that she didn't ask for. 
and I know that most of your prayers have been the things that you've been asking for but her commitment in her heart in a place of trusting God for the next 21 days on the first day not only was God preparing for the things she was going to ask for but the first day she got an answer to a question or, or, or a problem or a situation she didn't even ask for and if we serve a God that does not have respect of persons we're coming down the 21st day of this fast and I just want to declare to somebody that throughout these 21 days there is something that you didn't ask for hey God I feel it in my spirit there is something that you did not even ask for hallelujah is getting ready to find its way to your life because you have a key called faith you have a key called expectation you have a key called belief and hope and hallelujah and what you didn't ask for solomon come on y'all know your bible solomon didn't ask for riches solomon didn't ask for money all he asked for was wisdom and god gave him what he didn't ask for hallelujah i don't know about you but i need the wisdom for the stuff i didn't ask for hallelujah when blessing comes when breakthrough comes when when miracles come when millions come i need wisdom for the stuff i didn't even ask for hallelujah yeah if daniel said I, I'm, I'm trying to get to well i'm not i'm not even gonna be able to get to my text but um I, I was supposed to come from the book of acts but but she she made me come from the book of daniel i think it was chapter 9 and in chapter 10 but but and, and the media team don't have the scripture so um but i just gotta i gotta just flow with the spirit that's here right now and then we're gonna just raise up and go home hallelujah but daniel chapter 9 when daniel realized that it was time for the 70 years to be over and 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 it was time for them to move into what god had promised he, he they were going through the day-to-day -day routine but when he was reading the scriptures he read over Jeremiah's prophecy that after 70 years I'm going to restore you and he started doing the calculations and said hold up this is the day hallelujah that the Lord has made he was studying and reading and he was sensing in the spirit that this was what he was talking about that the day that this 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 captivity is coming to an end that's why he started his 21 day fast because he can sense that the promise was on the horizon hallelujah and I just want latter glory to know and everybody that's watching to know that the promise of God that he's promised you five years ago ten years ago it's just on the horizon and this fast is different yep. this fast is different from last year the year before last this is at a time that's critical for you transitioning to the very thing that God has promised you hallelujah ah just prophesy to somebody and say this is the day this is the day this is the day my captivity comes to an end this is the day that my dis my, my disappointment comes to the end this this is the day that depression comes to an end this is the day that my anger comes to an end this is a day uh, that i step into my promise and my hallelujah uh, so Daniel started praying and he started fasting and he said for for three full weeks he didn't eat any pleasant food for three full weeks he consecrated himself and put God first for three full weeks he denied his flesh and was sensitive to the spirit for three full weeks he sacrificed some things that he was normally comfortable with in order to make himself uncomfortable to trust God hallelujah for the impossible for three full weeks and the Lord sent him a message to say that the very first day you prayed I heard you hallelujah the very first day that you started praying 
I heard you. I know we're on day 21, and, and I know you prayed on day two, day three, day four, day five, uh, but he said the very first day I heard you. So listen to this. Not only do we have a praise for the things that he heard us pray, but we have a testimony for the things we didn't even ask for. So get ready for an overwhelming season of not only what you prayed, but also what you didn't ask for. It's getting ready to creep up from behind and tackle you. It's getting ready to come upon you of what you prayed and what you didn't pray for. Hallelujah. Just look at somebody and say, get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Yeah. Uh, let me let me all right I can, listen <laughs> hallelujah she said she said I didn't apply are y'all hearing the voice of the Lord she said I didn't even apply for the access to this door God gave me it happened through word of mouth somebody else spoke my name to somebody who had the power to open this door I don't know if you remember but I did declare this a few weeks ago that God is getting ready to put your name in the mouths of influential people hallelujah yeah, yeah see I'm so glad we don't have a church full of haters because if God did it for that one in the back, hallelujah. I, someone just shout out loud, you're next in line. You're next. You're next in line. You're next in line. Your name's about to be called. Your number's about to be rung. Come on. You're about to receive an email. You're, you're about to receive some message that you didn't even know was coming in your direction. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you can't talk nasty to people. Because you never know who's going to be the one to speak your name. That's why you can't be evil towards people. That's why you can't have a, a nasty attitude because you never know who God's going to use to say, bless my sister, bless my brother. They deserve this open door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody shout. They're calling my name. They're, they're calling my name. <laughs> A promotion is calling my name. An elevation is calling my name. A breakthrough is calling my name. Healing is calling my name. Deliverance is calling my name. Everything I need for this season I'm entering into is calling for me to come at this moment. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to be called into the office. <laughs> Hallelujah. You get ready to be called into the room. <laughs> Hallelujah. David, you're coming out the field and you're coming into the room. <laughs> They're calling your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this is for somebody whose name has been forgotten. Good God. Where they stop speaking about you. They, they haven't been talking about you. You felt like you were left alone. And they overlooked you. Hallelujah. But God said, they're about to call your name. Hallelujah. It's your time. It's your season. It's your turn. They're calling your name. Hallelujah. Come on, your faith is the key. Your commitment is the key. Your prayer life.
life is the key. Your devotion is the key. Your relationship is the key. Hallelujah, that gives you access to where God's trying to take you. Hey God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh God. Last year was a master's program with scholarships. This year was a job that came from word of mouth. Tell somebody it's the decade of pay. Yeah which is the mouth of God, the, the word of God, the expressions of God. So I'm, you know what? Because you might have some haters that may be afraid to say your name because they know you got the oil. They may be afraid to recommend you because they know that you're about to shake the whole room. But it's okay if people don't speak my name. The word of mouth is coming because the Lord has spoken it. And it shall come to pass. It's my decade for his word. I don't know. The Bible says we overcome by the word of our testimony. The blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. She said that this job is double of what I was already earning. Only her husband got excited about that. Did you hear what I said for what God has done for one among us? That what she didn't ask for entered her into a season of double. Hallelujah. All right, so, so if God is blessing my neighbor, he must be in the neighborhood, which means that double is coming. I said double for your trouble. Double for all that you've lost. Double for all that may have made you frustrated and angry. Double is coming in your direction. Hallelujah, double. Listen, babe, come here for a second. Yes, I, I, I share briefly, I share briefly uh, in Bible study. Um, but, but, but the people don't know the, 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 the warfare you've been facing on this job. Uh, for the last few years um, and, and, and the things that you've been encountering you've been dealing with and in the most difficult difficult time of your life um, you, you had to step away from the branch uh, in order to make sure that the family was good and take care of things and take care of yourself um, and then you came back to your one-on-one -on -one meeting with your your soup your 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 superiors um, and I want you to just quickly share that um, and, and, and what that prophetically means for every single one of us in this room. Yeah, just, just come. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, I know you wasn't ready for this, but go ahead. <laughs> Amen. And as he stated, I was out of the office for three weeks. And typically when you're out of the office, they have to send someone else into your office so that your office can be maintained or ran in your absence by another leader. But in this case, they didn't have another leader to put in the office. And when I returned back, we had our yearly, our annual review, and he asked me, what did you rate yourself? And I said, I rated myself a meets meets. And he said, why a meets meets? It's, 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 I met the expectation of the job in the how and the what. And I said, that's what I rated myself. I said, I feel like I'm better than that. I said, but I know there's more that I can offer that I haven't done yet. And he said, well, I just want to tell you that I rated you higher than that. What you didn't, I, I, I rated you higher than that. And he said, this this three weeks that you were out, your office, I didn't have to worry about. I, he said, you're the manager that started right here, but you're going like this. It, out of the entire market, I have managers that's either here 
or going up and down or going downwards, but your trajectory is the words that he used started here, but you're constantly going up here. So what he said to me was this year, this year is going to be different than the last years. I want more from you. I'm putting your name out there in different areas. I want you to speak more. I want you to express yourself more because what you have to offer, somebody else needs. So what I say to you, just as the sisters already stated, what you have to offer, somebody else needs. So this is your time to speak. This is your time to walk in it. And it, it, what, what he said was, your office ran better when you were out than when you were there. And it's because of what you put in the people that they were able to take the, the branch to the next level. So God said that what's in you, you're about to take somebody else to the next level. So speak your truth. Speak what's in you. Put yourself out there and let God do the rest. Somebody better praise him. Somebody better praise him. Somebody better praise him. I, I don't think you caught it. I don't think you caught it. In one of the most difficult, challenging moments of her life, God sent a reminder that you're going upward. Ha. Where the enemy thought you'd go down. Where the devil thought that you would fall. Where the devil thought that you would never get up. The Lord sent somebody else with a word for you. That you're going here. Look at somebody and say you're going here. You're, you're going to another level. You're going to another dimension. Everyone else around you has plateaued. Everyone else around you has reached their limit. But eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard the level that God's getting ready to take you to hallelujah I just need someone to prophetically lift yourself to another level I y'all didn't do it with me I said lift yourself in upward motion I'm going higher Hallelujah. And the devil thought that in your lowest moment that everything around you was going to crumble. That everything around you was going to falter. But God said because of where I'm taking you, you've done everything necessary to make sure that when you shift and you transition, everything is going to be alright. My grandma used to say, I've got a feeling that every Everything is gonna be all right. Look at your neighbor and say everything is gonna be all right. You're moving higher. It's gonna be all right. You're going farther. It's gonna be all right. You're going further. It's gonna be all right. And no weapon formed against you or your son or your daughters your nieces and nephews shall be able to prosper your trajectory is higher tell somebody you started here but God's taking you here I find somebody else and say you started here but God's taking you higher hallelujah 24 God's gonna do more 24 walk through your door you have access to be who God called you to be do what God called you to do give God the best praise you have Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got three minutes. We did one for the Father. We did one for the Son. 
Hallelujah. God. I might get in trouble and I might get tackled. Uh, but but, but uh, testimony service is now open. And someone who has a third testimony, uh, rush to this altar real quick. Hallelujah. And share. Praise the Lord. So, um, as we know, I'm at Fairleigh Dickinson University, correct? And um, during this time, is it was a very rough fall semester. I was sharing with Sister Melissa, you know, Jaden is in as well. It's, it's been rough. It hasn't been easy. Um, but right now, I've got two scholarship stacks to start out with. And one of them is contingent upon me staying at a 2.5 GPA. I got some rough professors. One of them is 90, the other one is 92. And they made some mistakes on my final um, report card in the end. So my GPA was at a 2.4. And I said, Lord, I need you desperately because that's a $30,000 overhead that I, I just can't, I just don't got it like that yet. So with that, I've been, I've been calling, I've been calling, I've been calling my academic advisor. I called when the fast started, after we, we buried Papa, the following week, we're going through the fast and, and I didn't feel like fasting, if I, could, if I can be transparent. Um, but but, I, but I, I did it anyway. And, but when I finally got in touch with the head of the history department and the head of the writing department, you know what they said? They said that because you got through the fall semester, now you can have a conversation with them to help you with your GPA. So I don't know who I'm talking to, but once you get through the rough season, once you get through the rough season, they can help you rise to the next level. I don't know who this is for, but the door is opening after, after you endure hardness like a good soldier, after you go through the trial and tribulation, after you go through everything that you need to go through, 24, there will be more bars. And I know for a fact, I couldn't even go. I was ashamed that I had a 2.4. I didn't even want to tell our senior global apostle that I had a 2.4. I couldn't even, I didn't, I didn't even feel comfortable doing the whole, y'all, y'all, y'all keep me in prayer because I'm, I'm struggling. Under, but I just went to God for myself and said, God, I need you to move on my behalf. And he did it for me. And now the GPA is not a 3.1, not a 3.2, not a 3.3, but a 3.4. It's a 3.4. And now the scholarship money is back in the account. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't know who this is for. But you're not going to have to worry about it. Once you go through the trial, you're not going to have to worry about it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Tell somebody stop worrying about it. Stop. You've already prayed about it. You've already fasted about it. You already gave it to God. Stop worrying about it. God's going to fix it. God's going to turn it around. God's going to move you to where you're supposed to be. Woo! A 2.4 to a 3.4. I said a 2.4 to a 3.4. I'm, I'm waiting for you to catch me. I said a 2.4 to a 3.4. Look at somebody and say, you're going to another level. I said you started here, but you're moving here. Give them the best praise you have. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. This was a trick of the enemy to threaten that which belonged to you. <laughs> Did you hear me? To threaten what was already yours. That it had a contingency. That if you do this, you'll have it. And, and so the enemy has attacked some of you to think that he is going to remove or revoke what already belongs to you. 
hallelujah but because you prayed uh, because you've been fasting uh, what God has for you it is for you and no devil in hell can take what belongs to you hey, I don't know if you heard the detail but the ones that gave the mark that put him in jeopardy found out that they made a mistake and they had to correct I come to tell you that every voice and every attack and every enemy that tried to pull you from where you're supposed to be has to reverse hallelujah and we declare and we decree hallelujah that every word curse is being reversed every negative motion is being reversed every negative thing spoken is being reversed tell somebody the curse is broken i refuse to live in almost i'm moving in already done hallelujah hi yeah yeah the scholarship is mine the promotion is mine the miracle is mine the breakthrough is mine the healing is mine hallelujah all right let's go hallelujah all right all right here's the one we're going to shout on i know i said one for the father one for the son and one for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Uh, Lazarus was dead four days uh, before he came back up. Uh, so, so this fourth one is the one that's going to send us in the praise going home. Hallelujah. I, I need one more testimony. Hallelujah. By the time I turn around, I got to see you. One more testimony. Hallelujah. finishing my bachelor's degree I'll be done in March um, but I decided that I wanted to go back for my master's the problem was the time frame that they gave me for my bachelor's and the school that I wanted to attend for my master's they run hand in hand so I had to call my school and I had to figure out how can I finish in this amount of time in order to transition into my master's so they told me well, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to double up your classes. It's gonna cost you more. It's gonna take you a lot more time. So I was like, uh, all right. Is there anything else I can do? So they have this thing where you can do alternative classes and it'll transfer over. So I applied to my master's program with maybe five classes left in my bachelor's. So I was like, uh, maybe I'll get in, maybe I won't. So I applied, I sent it out text my parents I was like hey listen I just applied pray for me <laughs> they was like you got this you got this I was like all right the next day I received the notification from the, the school and it was like just based off of your transcript from your associate's degree and the classes that you've taken in your bachelor's program we're just going to accept you hey! so I was like okay no problem I applied for the first session online. First session started in January, but I'm still not finished with my bachelor's. I was like, okay, how am I gonna do this? So I called the school, I said, hey, listen, I'm not finished with my bachelor's, is there another session? They was like, yeah, it's one in March. Just apply for the one in March. I'm like, okay, I could do that. So I called my school for my bachelor's. I'm like, when will I be finished? It's like, oh, you'll be finished March 18th. I was like, okay, cool. But the problem is the master's starts March 21st. I have to be finished. My degree has to be conferred by March 21st in order for me to start. I said, what can I do for you guys to confer my degree and I can start? They was like, well, when your last class is done, call us and we'll take care of it. We'll rush it and we'll send it to the other school. But there's another problem. My financial aid. There's a merge with financial aid. So if you're going from one school to the next, they pretty much cut in half what you're being approved for. So I'm like, how am I gonna do this? So then the, the school for my master's was like, well, here's what you can do. Fill out this verification form, 
let us know you'll be done March 21st, and we'll, you know, we'll take care of the rest. But you have to apply for your classes now. So I'm like, okay, Jesus. Text my mom and dad. I said, listen, the bill is $3,000 for <laughs> three classes. They was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to have to figure it out. Got an email Friday. All three classes are paid for. One of the classes will be dropped because I, I'm taking it now. So they're going to drop one of the classes. And instead of me graduating with my master's in 16 months, I'll be graduating in 12. I told you this was the one. Hallelujah. Oh, there's a mouthful in this one. Oh, my God. Tell somebody, I'm in between miracles. I'm in, I'm in between miracles. God said, your blessing is about to overlap. Before you finish with one, I'm already opening the door for another. Hallelujah. Your, your, God, uh, let, let's go. We got to go. We got to go. Let's. Based on how you handled your associates and how you're handling your bachelors gave you access to the masters. So it does matter how you navigate each level. <laughs> so, so how you are maneuvering on this level, it set the trajectory for this level hallelujah i just want to tell somebody i don't know what level you're on hallelujah but god said i'm pleased with how you handle it i'm how you, you, i'm pleased with how you handled it and 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 so how you handle it gave you access now i've never heard of overlapping program degrees that usually you have to complete one before you can be accepted into the other because they need your transcripts to prove that you have completed before you go into the next one so usually that door has to close before this door opens y'all not ready for me today i said usually that door has to close before this one opens L let me just explain what what i just said what she said and what, what just came in my spirit see what, what my, my, the training facility that i do my my soccer business out of me and my brother do our soccer business out of um is a bubble it's one of those bubbles that has air circulating through it and there's a revolving door for entry but then there is another door that 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 gives you access when you are maybe carrying heavy things boxes or what have you because the the revolving door is only enough for one person to go through but the other door is for multiple people and larger items and one day someone tried to open the other door and the facilities manager ran and said quick shut the door because the pressure in the room that you can't that 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 the first door has to open and the other one has to shut then it opens so that the air does not be sucked out and, and air from the outside comes in and whatever and it will cause the whole bubble to collapse so in order for you to successfully get in that door has to shut before you open the other one otherwise everything will collapse hallelujah ah, but in in her case in ashanti's case normally everything can collapse if you don't have certain doors closed before the next one opens but god says before i even close this door i'm getting ready to have your foot planted in the next room hallelujah and you don't have to worry about nothing collapsing because it's all about timing 
she said wait a minute i gotta finish by the 18th in order to start by the 21st and i wasn't the math twin but all i know is that's three days y'all ready to freeze god up in here <laughs> within three days <laughs> Everything that would hinder us from walking in a door had to be removed because in three days miracles happen. In three days resurrections happen. In three days, look at somebody and shout, it's a matter of timing. It's a lastly, listen, and we gotta raise the offering. But lastly, she said. A program that's supposed to take how many months 16 months is only gonna happen in 12 months hallelujah uh, it, what should have happened in 16 months is happening in 12 months and three months ago she didn't even know if she would even be in this program I just want you to know that whatever you've been stressed about before this fast started because you're willing to trust God hallelujah God said not only do you not have to worry about it but I'm getting ready to speed up the process hallelujah and when it took others 16 months to do it might take you 12 months to do God's getting ready to accelerate the process the process to your next level the process to your next door hallelujah give God your best praise your best praise hallelujah All right, let's go. And those of you that know the true words of prayer, pray our strength in the Lord. Oh, oh, come on, y'all know that's what they say at the testimony service. Pray our strength in the Lord. Strength for our next level. Strength for our breakthrough. Strength for our acceleration. Strength for our promotion. Strength for our next degree. Strength for our next move. Pray our strength in the Lord. Yes. All right. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands and give them praise in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We adore you. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the blood that covers us. Thank you for the blood that washes us. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. And the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on here, Minister Cleo. She said, I got to get into the overflow. <laughs> I, I, I got to get into the overflow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you. I had to get in. I just couldn't sit back and, and watch all this happen without giving somebody else some type of encouragement. So for most of you guys that know uh, me and know my family knows that my husband um, has been diagnosed with colon rectal cancer um, since last September of last year. And so, you know, it, it's been what it's been. And so last week he, he met the half of his chemotherapy. And at the half they said that they was going to do a CT scan, a CAT scan, just to see how the chemo is working and stuff like that. That was last week, Thursday. Um, here's the blessing from that. I get a call as I'm picking up my daughter Kira from school, and it's from my husband. He's getting ready to go to take the test. And he says, he says, Cleo, I need you to pray for me. You know, I need you to pray that this, this thing is shrinking and it's going away. Um, I'm like, I already did that this morning. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's done. It's already done. He says to me, no, I need us to pray right now. My God. So that's a blessing because my husband has never asked me to pray with him. 
at all. So the lesson, the, the lesson there was this fast is not only for you, but it's opening up the mouths of those that are around you and those that are connected to you. That's one. Here's the second one. That was on Thursday. Monday, I get a text because the results came and I get a text from my husband. And I, <laughs> the text from my husband basically says, love, the cancer has shrunk. What was the word that he used? Oh, my God. I forgot the word that he used. Substantially. Substantially. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So he said the cancer has, the tumor has shrunk substantially in the name of Jesus. But I need you to get this because Pastor was talking about it. His cancer level was at a level three. Because it has shrunk and they did not see it anymore in the lymphatic system, took him down to a level two. A stage, a stage two. No longer a stage three, but a stage two. We're talking about levels. He's either taking you up or reversing and taking things away from you. Come on now. We give him all the praise and all the honor. That's what this fast is doing. It's not only for you, but everybody else that's around you as well. So praise him. Thank you. Somebody praise him. There's about to be a substantial change, a substantial release, a substantial breakthrough. It's going to be obvious that the levels have shifted. Holland, I said the levels have shifted. Prophesy to your neighbor the word substantial. Substantial. That means it's going to be obvious. It means it's a significant amount. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes. Substantial. Significant. Imaginable. Hallelujah. We declare it from every word of testimony today that God, not only will you provide jobs, not only will you provide breakthroughs, not only will you provide scholarships, not only will you provide healing and deliverance, not only will you provide, hallelujah, degrees, Father, you are going to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power of faith that's working in us. Give God a substantial praise. I said give him a substantial praise. A significant praise. Hallelujah. Give him a praise in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. We give you glory for healing. We give you glory for provision. We give you glory for breakthroughs. We give you glory for elevations. We give you glory for protection. We give you glory for your wisdom. We give you glory for restoration. We give you glory in our marriages. We give you glory in our families. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. And faith comes by hearing this word, the word of God. Hallelujah. That he'll take you from faith to faith and glory to glory. 
Daniel chapter 9 and chapter 10, the moment you began praying and fasting, I heard you. And I've released Michael the archangel to fight for you. And he said, I'm coming for your words. Every word that you prayed and even the words you didn't pray, God is responding by his divine power and his divine providence. And so we thank God for all of the testimonies that we've heard and even the testimonies we haven't heard yet. Hallelujah, because God's not finished. Our 21 day fast is over, uh, but the consecration continues. A lifestyle that's devoted to God, putting him first continues. Discipline of having a devotional lifestyle of praying and seeking him several times a day continues. And with that continuation, this year you're gonna see substantial doors opening for you that's leading us into destiny moments hallelujah if you're watching us if you're here and you're watching but you don't know this Jesus that we've been testifying about this Jesus that we've been shouting about this Jesus we preach about we want you to surrender to him Either you surrender to him for the first time, if that's you, we want you to come, we want you to respond. If you're watching, lift up a hand emoji to let us know that you want to surrender to Jesus. Jesus is the door. I know we're talking about destiny doors and strategic access. It is by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we have access to eternal life. Jesus is the door, the entry. No man goes to the Father but through him. So if you're here and you want to give Jesus your life, maybe you've given him your life, but you strayed away through the cares of this world or the situations or circumstances that may have been overwhelming to the point that you've found yourself straying away from God. I want you to know that he's married to the backslider. He says that though you may have turned your back on me, I've never turned my back on you. So if you're here, I want you to pray this prayer. If you're watching, I want you to pray this prayer using my words, but mean it from your heart. Say, Jesus, I've made mistakes. I have sinned. But today, I want to be saved. I'm starting all over again. Forgive me of all my sins. Every wrong thought, every wrong word, in every wrong deed wash me and make me whole I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus just for me thank you Jesus for forgiving me for loving me receiving me and accepting me fill me with your spirit and I'll never be the same for the rest of my life Jesus is Lord and I belong to God hallelujah in Jesus name amen come on clap your hands and give God praise if you prayed that prayer and you meant that prayer I want you to let us know we thank God for a saved house who's here in the in the sanctuary but if you're watching and you've given your, your life for the first time we want you to please inbox us let us know we want to continue to walk with you during your journey amen hallelujah were you blessed by today's service give god praise for the prayer the praise the worship and the words of testimony hallelujah we want to prepare ourselves the giving and the receiving of tithes and offering unto the lord we want to honor god in our giving on today amen and so if you can prepare yourselves for our tithe and offering affirmation hallelujah as father we now come to freely and to joyfully give our tithes and offering we stand upon your word that you will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that we would not have room enough to receive and you will rebuke the enemy so he cannot destroy we are living in the now faith and in all areas of our lives we have total victory you can give through cash app through 
Givelify or PayPal. Amen. And you can also come and sow uh, here in the sanctuary. As you come, give God praise for the next levels that you're going to. Come on, come on.